All right, we good. No intro. We just going. No intro. You know, this is episode one, man. I'm I'm so excited. We finally here. Yeah, I'm looking on it. I can't. It's not. It's not even showing me that it's live right now. Hold on. On YouTube, it's Cashman, California, right? Yeah. yeah so right mine is showing well, that it just went. Okay, now it is. Now it is. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes, we should be good at least on there. Only on YouTube though. I'm just gonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Type it to YouTube and see what's good. I wish I wasn't wearing this fucking shirt. Like, uh, <laughs> you told me we were going live. I, I did. I, I didn't. You didn't change my attire at all. I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Ironically, you match my scene. Like, you got yeah the black hat. I got a black sweat. <laughs> you got the green, green. shirt. Green. That's crazy how. Are the walls green too, or is it just the light beaming off of it? Just the light. That's dope. It looks like the whole wall is green. Right? Right? Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, that's um that was kind of the goal. Like (laughs) try to have one size fits all. Yeah. Achieved. Uh, I gotta fix my um camera. Like it's always so zoomed in. It's a wide angle lens. That's good, man. People want to see you. They want to be in your presence. Yeah, but like they I have all like this right shit behind me. me that I thought was gonna set an ambiance, and you can't see none of it. You just see this big ass chair. <laughs> all right, tell me about um, tell me about your locks. You said you're trying to find your look. Yeah, so like I, I mean that's I think that's a lot of struggle with niggas with locks. It's like you. You grow them out, you know, you go through that ugly phase, right? You go through that, like, why did I do this? People looking at you like it was a bad life decision. All right, um, what length? What length is the bad life? Like, the is little, it? The little poop-poops, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, they, like, it hasn't fell yet? Nah, bro. It well, hasn't. I mean, like, they might shake uh, and they might dangle. You okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. you might get a little, but if a strong gust of wind come by, it, like, it just doesn't know you have the hair at all. And so then what, like, what's the victory moment? Like, from the, from the moment, ugly phase, what's the victory moment? I would say my victory moment was when, like, it was, like, on my ears. Oh, okay. But once once you get shoulder length, you look at motherfuckers that, that ain't shoulder length, you be like, you still <laughs> still trying, huh? <laughs> Almost there, bro. It's a struggle. I feel you. I feel you. You, you know what they've been through. <laughs> yeah. you know the, but when you got the... The ear touch, that was victory. You yeah, must have, you like, like an ear fetish. So no, like when it's, no, no, it's not even that. Like, like, I don't like shit touching, like, at night. Like, that's why I like, I like, I like wearing, a, I used to like wearing a wave cap. Now I got to wear this damn bonnet. So, like, that's that's the whole thing. Like, with dreads, they don't I tell can't. you the Hold shit. on, man. The bonnet. Yes. It something, is about, something about bonnet just uh, gets me. I don't know what it is. It is necessary if you have dreads. It makes it sense. Necessary. They don't got another name for it, it, like a monnet or <laughs> nothing. No. Just, it's just a bonnet. I, I, w- I was part of the wave cap game for so long, but like the wave cap will put like flatten your stuff, and then the mm. you know the bottom of it be fluffy. So like yeah. now you you know what I mean. So like it just and then like wave caps don't have like the good. They make silk silk ones and stuff like that. You want to use like a satin or something like that, really. Um, but they don't last long, especially when your hair start growing out loud and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, but yeah, so that um, um, when I hit my ears, I was like, okay, I can, I'm I here. can fuck with this. Yeah. But then I'm here. now I'm like down my back, and I'm like, I know I saw your picture. I'm like, this dude. Yeah, it's long. Now I mean, what, it gets to what's the? Point, the what you say? Oh, I'm saying like now it gets to the point where like it's in the way. Mm. And that's what I'm about to say. Like, when is it, or is it, ever too long? Because yeah. it almost reminds me of like the gym. Like I remember a long time ago going to the gym, and I saw this dude. He was like mad swole. He was talking to me, and I don't know if you remember Greg from Fairfield, but uh, we were at the gym in Sac, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, y'all keep doing your thing, but trust me, like once you start getting some something on you, you're just gonna keep wanting more and more and more and more." And but I that's an like, addiction. That's I was like, like probably a not. That also probably not shoots do crack that. in his veins. That's an addiction. Because there's nothing, like, you're not a Viking. You're not nobody. Sac- Fairfield's not, or Davis ain't invading Sacramento. So you ain't getting ready for some shit like that. You At just, all. you have an addiction. And the gym is an addiction. And that's why, like, people, even when you work out, I think 
in order to be successful in working out, you got to get addicted to working out. I was you about to say, is it a good there. addiction? Well, like working out, you think? Yeah, like 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 are do you think there are good addictions and bad addictions? So like some you should never quit your addiction because it's really good. Yeah, you should never quit quit your sex addiction, right? <laughs> that should always be very very key in your life and successful. Yeah, yeah, That's what yeah. you we're here to do. You, you should go. never forget your like stop your hustle addiction. You should always be trying to strive to get better. But once you got to specially like once you start having to wear that that spaghetti strap uh tank top in the gym, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like you a grown ass man, you got that deep V neck. <laughs> <laughs> like it's coming down it from your shoulders to your belly but it's like yeah yeah i don't know what you here for because yeah. there's no weight in this facility that is going to propel you <laughs> to whatever that next level is but you know it's funny like those dudes you don't see them anywhere but like the deadlift zone like mm-hmm. you don't see that dude you know doing the leg machine he's not cycling he's like He's not playing basketball. There's nothing else. He goes in. That's where, the, that's where all the weight lives is in the deadlift section. Like that's, that's where all the plates. That's, that's it. Where they, they've maxed out on every free weight in the gym. They've maxed out on every cable machine. It does nothing. It's like I, I would think it's like once you graduate from like to meth, right? Like oh. <laughs> you start taking meth. You okay. can't somebody can't pass you a blunt. You like, nigga. You don't know how. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what am I gonna do with that? <laughs> what am I gonna do with that? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that has nothing for me. Yeah. It's like chapstick at that point. Like, I just rub right. the blunt on my lips, you know, <laughs> <Yeah. little laughs> to get ready. Yeah, that's to get it. ready for the I, mess. I just take the weed, <laughs> rub it in my hands, and put it around my neck like it's cologne at this right. point. <laughs> just prime but, myself. But I don't think I don't like I don't I don't know. Like I, I'm think once my goal with dreads is never was to like get long. I just wanted, I was going through the pandemic. I was like, oh, I'm going to just start my dreads like many people did. Um, I, I like, you know what I'm saying, dread culture and all that. I, I'm i not as deep. I don't wear crystals around my neck. I don't drink uh, kombucha juice and shit like that. Like, I'm not I on that. Kombucha. I drink kombucha. I mean, I, I do, but not for the dread reasons, you know what I'm saying? Mm, but mm, I do. Different kombucha, yeah. I do understand, like, some people, like, like put it all together into this spiritual, like, my hair is my strength and all that other stuff. And I'm like, I feel exactly the same. Yeah. Except I was trying to be like, oh, well, now I got to cut my hair. But this is way more maintenance. Like, I got a beard. I've always had a beard. It's been longer. Like, dreads are the most maintenance that you have to do. Like, mm. I'm all, you're always, if you want your shit to, like, be presentable. Like, I, I, my hair isn't the type of hair where I can just go, like, two, three months without a, a retwist. Like, my stuff's going to yeah. start unraveling at the root. You know, yeah. it'll still lock up down here, but at the root, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be froze in between there. You know what I mean? Loose hair. Like, <laughs> and gonna, it's not that coarse, like, good fit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a PSA. To anybody out there thinking about dreads, it's work. Or you're going to look work. You're gonna look a little little ratty. Yeah. You know, yeah. or... And if or you got somewhere work. to be at, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like... You're not Jay Z. People are like, oh, Jay Z got dread. like, but you're not. You're not a billionaire. Yeah, you're not that. You when you're a billionaire, you're you can you can be Jay Z. You can yeah. go in there. Who gonna tell him to anything? But right. when right. you, you know, what I'm saying, what number? What number did you want? Like, you can't. You know, it's a whole different. That's a whole different vibe. You at Target or something? Like, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it be you. Like be that. you. But at the end of the day, I just that's not me. I, I want to present myself in a in a clean appearance. Yeah. But once I get to once I was gonna say once once my goal reaches the um, the the length that I could get a like a a low ponytail from the front to the back without my hair falling out the front hair you know what I mean then I think I've achieved my goal. Uh, okay, let, let me let me speak to you from someone who has low hair. Like I started growing mine out, eh, didn't really rock so well, so cut it back down but let me speak to you from the rest of us because i know you probably in the same ballpark is and this is to the to everyone like we need to come up with some more masculine terms for men to also enjoy (laughs) the long hair experience because i'm gonna be honest i never want a ponytail i just don't want 
a ponytail and I don't want to wrap it up into a bun to put my bonnet on. I don't, you know, I just, and, and sorry, a, man bun ain't enough. Like that's not, lot, you just throw man of, in front of it. No, there's a lot of that, right? There's a lot of realization that you gonna have to do shit that you didn't have to do before. Like <laughs> you ain't never had to do this right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a move that's not you a never had to flick your hair up out of your face or pin it up so you can write like you feel me you yeah, know, you'd be like yeah. let me write this down to your hair side of your face you're like hold on one second <laughs> back in your hand your hair and then you trying to get the yeah. last that yeah. one to you, keep you falling write, back you out write, you writing a uh co- Oh, you signed your contract for a rap label, and you like, hold on one second. <laughs> hold on, but with so many people with long hair in the game, it's probably like that. It's it, it's a hundred. Probably like there's, like they get ready to go no, sign something, they do that. There's no manly way to do any of those things. There's no manly way to get your hair out of your face. There's no manly way to right. tie your hair up. To That's sleep, nice. you're going to throw that bonnet on, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just gonna, you're going to have to do it. A lot of people have tried. There's, like, men, long dreadlocks, look like a, a sock. And you're supposed to put your <laughs> dreads in and stuff like that. But, like, they don't – that's why women wear bonnets. That is the most effective. That's the best one. It's the most effective. That's the best one. I'd have had to go buy, like, two or three of them because now I have – Bonnets for different things. Like I want to go outside. I need <laughs> need this bonnet. I'm gonna go to bed. The, the field gotta, bonnet. Yeah, you know it's saying? my like, field bonnet. <laughs> yeah, I I do all black. Like there's a lot of people that have put the pink one on and the flowers and floral and all that. Like that's one. I'm like I can't. I'm getting you bonnets for your birthday. Just <laughs> birthday. Just, <laughs> just so you bonnets. know. And I'm gonna try to label them. With various <laughs> places in your one. life that you I know change you your go. oil in, <laughs> change your oil in this body. <laughs> right. Oh, man. I, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I was um, like I I've been using like the sponge brush, getting like sponge curls at the top. That was my favorite side. shit. I love that. Yeah, I've I been love rocking, that look. I love I've that. I've been look. rocking that one. And yep. as soon as I start looking at the upkeep for that. They were like, well, first you're going to need to get a bonnet. I was like, God. Yeah. They got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yep. got me. There's a hard, like, you know what? Fade. Fade me out. Give me a taper. Yeah. <laughs> just. Yeah, just clear, take it all. Clear that, right that all. So, so I can clear, Whatever you got to do to clear the bonnet need, like, just give me the, the no bonnet. Give me that. I still got sponges to this day. Like, that's how I started. And just like, I was like, oh, I love, I love that look. Yeah, you know what I mean that yeah, that looks look good on me, and then it just kind of then you start be like, okay, well I'm gonna just get freeform dreads, right? Like, cause oh. that's what you know using. Hold that on, sponge. what's that? Freeform dreads is like not like I have like plaits, like where they they part your hair and then they re, you know what I'm saying twist it, but like freeform yeah. is like having that sponge, using that, and as your hair start growing, the dreads just kind of form themselves uh. and they go or whatever way that they want to go. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what? I think Eric, that's what Erica was talking about. Because one day she was like, you're going to mess around and have dreads. I don't know if she said freeform dreads or not. Mm. But she was like, you're going to mess around and have locks. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> do I need a bonnet for that? <laughs> All right, well, that. well, then no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get haircuts. Yeah, Hold man. on, bro. We have to talk about, um, I know you saw it. I know you saw the Netflix fight that was announced. With you're talking about um Jake Paul or whatever his name is. And yes. And Mike Tyson. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this, and you probably got more to say about it because I know you're a boxing fan. Hardcore. If Mike Tyson don't win that fucking fight, uh. it's gonna put an embarrassment on all boxing forever because there is no reason and i'm not like jake paul has hands or ryan whichever one of the pauls it is yes, he's jake. got hands it's not he's not like no <clears throat> like people be talking shit i'm like bro he got hands like he'd be out there tra- he's really training he's I mean, really he put tyron woodley woodley out cold yeah like that's what i'm saying like he he got hands facts but mike tyson still is out there doing that bow like <laughs> If he don't, he does not hit as hard as my, 
bro, if if Mike Tyson does not win that fight, I don't. I I just can't. I don't know if I can respect. And I know, right? Mike Tyson was fifty nine years old. Like you know what I mean? I right, know right, he's right. not Iron Mike Tyson anymore. <laughs> right. I get that. Right. But but you just expect. Tyson to still. I expect him to put a show on and get people what they want and earn their money because I know it's, it's going to be everybody's going to be watching it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's probably going to be the biggest one that he ever. You know what I'm saying? Is, is going to get to this point? The, Maybe the next time Mayweather and and you know all of them going to try to jump on. Like you made how much? You know what I mean? But um, if if Mike Tyson don't win that, bro, I just don't have no faith in like. I don't know. I don't know. I just think it'll be. It's going to be very, very scripted if that's the point. It's like, there's no way. There's uh, no way he should not have won that. So Tyson has to be the favorite in boxers' eyes. Jake Paul will most likely be the favorite in fans' eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the, the novice outsider yep. fan. Um, Jake Paul has every bit of talent to win the fight. Yeah. That that is the scary part. Yeah. Because he like you said, he he practices. He's got the sharpness, he's, he's got the speed. He's putting in work. Like he he's even if he wasn't a, a YouTube star, he wouldn't get as high profile fights as he does, yeah. but he'd be getting some yeah. some low level pro fights by now because he actually got yeah. hands now for tyson the only thing that worries me about this fight is the they say the first thing to go in boxing is your chin mm. we ain't seen tyson get hit yeah that's true so you don't know like yeah. you don't know how he's he don't know yeah you know before you you could have just banged on his chin and nothing would have happened but nothing now it's happen. like yeah. so th- that's the so so they always talk about a puncher's chance he has that, yeah. but but I do feel like Tyson is just so he's just a block of a man. Like even to today, he's just a yeah. scary, scary guy. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be really difficult. I don't know if Jake Paul has the power. I know he has the the skill yeah. to be in there with with him. I don't know if he has the power. And so my worry, my my forecasting is that it's probably gonna end up being like some oohs and ahs in the beginning and then it's going to start to slow down and slow down and he's going to end up like winning on points that's that's my thought that is fine right because that's what i think the script is right Right. i think that's that's the script that they would like to have going on but if those oohs and ahs better be fucking like both sided, right? I'm just not yeah. trying to shit on Jake Paul because I know, like, I wouldn't fight him. You know what I mean? I know, bro, right, has, right. he's in the gym <laughs> right now, right now there for this fight. You know what right I mean? Right now, like, he's that's not. A fact. He doesn't, and that's one thing I respect about him is like he don't play play. Like he's like, nigga, like I know, I, I he, you know, being a, um, um, an activist for MMA fighters and like getting fair wages. Like so, he yeah. he be in which they is huge. They wouldn't respect him in the community if he wasn't one of the wolf you know what i'm saying like he's part yeah. of that wolf pack so um but again those oohs and ahs have to be fucking worth it and then you let the script play out like and, and let it you know let it be unscripted a little bit and let it be scripted and stuff like that and you know jake paul ends up winning by decision this is a 60 year old man <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean at the end of the day Regardless, like you said, he's like got that, some mileage on him. Yeah, that chin is gone. He didn't start smoking weed for the last twenty something, thirty, you know, probably the whole time. But like you know, publicly, right. that takes that takes a lot out of you. You know what I mean? So I, really I would be interested to see um, on that fight. But I ain't paying for it. You know, I'll go oh, watch it. Sometime. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna watch it though. Yeah, I'm gonna watch and, it. And yeah. Everybody's gonna watch it. That's one thing about. it. That's why I felt like it was such a. Uh, a smart. I feel like my light is like making me glow. It is. Um, it is glow a little bit. Um, yeah, I feel like even the people that are like, "This is ridiculous. This is a travesty. This is a this you know this takes away from boxing. from boxing." Yeah, they still they're gonna watch. watch. Yeah, of course they still of watch. course. Yeah, everybody who has an opinion is still gonna watch the shit regardless. 
it's just uh like you said, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of boxing. I'm not all into it. I can't tell you when somebody won their first title and all that other stuff, but like um I just I I grew up as a kid watching Tyson these fights that these clips that they put out like you know, Uncle James played like they was watching that fight, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And talking right. about it the whole entire time. Uncle Fr- you know what I mean? Like all of these people. So I know um what Tyson is capable of. I understand that he's thirty years after that. Facts. Whether he's still you know, he's still fit. <clears throat> you know, I'm not saying he's overweight and out of shape or anything like that. He's still fit. You get back on that bike, all it's going to take is a couple times to, you know, get your foot in right, and you're going to be like, oh, yep, yep. yep. I got the, the taste for blood again, you know what I mean? All right. The question um, is, can you catch up? Like, like you you fighting somebody who's been fighting, like, every year. Yep. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're in training camps constantly. Yep. Like, do you have enough time to catch up? You know what I'm saying, and, and they're the, they're a type of fighter and a size fighter that you didn't fight before. Yeah, like he was lightning fast. Not not only because he was lightning fast, but also because he was a heavyweight and everybody else was slow. Slow, yeah. Like he he's a heavyweight moving like a lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> so it just looked <laughs> even worse. Yeah. Now you're going to get somebody who has the capability of moving at the same speed, maybe not as barbaric as your style was but they have the 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 talent to move at the speed the, the other people he was fighting they couldn't move like that if they wanted to yeah. i think the closest was evander which is why he bit him because it's like dude you are moving way too quick your your hand speed is way like stop okay stop yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just stop you're doing yeah. too much well i mean what, the, what was he talking about when uh he fought uh roy jones jr it was like oh it was a couple times night uh tyson could have knocked him out but because of their no knockout clause, and I think maybe this fight is going to have that underline, like, "Hey, no knockouts." Yeah. Um, I, I think it's you know at this point it's safety, right? Like, you know, you knock out a sixty-year-old man who hasn't been knocked out in thirty years. That might be the last. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, Am I blurry? Uh, no, you straight. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting nonetheless. Like you said, everybody's going to be watching. Everybody's going to be talking about it. Whether you want to see it or not, it's going to be on your timeline on anything that you get on. Um, it's, it's just going to be, I guess, very, very interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, that that Roy fight was, uh, it was like a little frustrating because it's like I, I, I wanted to see, we all wanted to see what would happen, yeah. though we know we weren't going to see what would have happened because yeah. it's too late now, but you still wanted to see something happen. Yeah, and it just kind of felt like, and there were a couple times that I, that I remember some shots that that Tyson threw at Roy it looked like Roy's ribs was was hurting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, he's oh, like I can't it. knock you out, but I can knock something off. Yeah, I can definitely hurt you. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you out here. Yeah, you go get hurt. Right, right. No, that's a fact. Who won that UFC fight that just happened? Um, with old boy, the um, I like the dude. I can't think of his name because I'm not really into UFC. Sugar something like uh, what's his name? It's like a red head. Oh dude. oh 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 oh. Um, uh, sh- um, shoot. Yeah, nah, with, I can't think with, of his with name. With the braids. Yeah. Um, sh- uh, I Sean to, O'Malley. Yeah, I wanted to actually get that UFC fight, but I forgot when it came on. Yeah, but, they just uh, keep I saw his the last price. one. Oh yeah, I saw his last the last time he had fought. I went um uh, Oh when he when he got the belt. Did he did he win this one last one? Yeah, the last one is when he got the belt. Um he took it from um dang, I can't think of names right now either. Um the black dude who was uh Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, he he yeah. knocked him I out. I saw that one. <laughs> so he took so this was his first time defending the belt uh-huh. and then he he won this fight. He won this fight, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when he, he wouldn't he even was, think, bro, has like he just don't even look like. Yeah. That's what I be trying to tell people, bro. Right, is stop running your stop. mouth. You just <laughs> don't days. know. You don't you know. Don't know. Like, Fighters oh, look little, different now. Yeah, a little stupid pink hair, bro, coming to like, 
Oh, for real? And when we start walking on this ground like a monkey, <laughs> just <laughs> scraping his ugly. <laughs> Remember that uh that comedian was like, when, when I knew I was over, when he started grabbing his legs, stretching, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't mess with nobody with cauliflower ears. I don't mess with nobody <laughs> at all. Start, start stretch like long stretches, like yeah. They 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 on a different grind. You just <laughs> apologize. Like, just like, go ahead and like, apologize. I will jump, snap, mule kick you right in the side of your head. <laughs> I still say that line today. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you ain't never seen Blake Man. You ain't never seen Blake Man. <laughs> you ain't never seen Blake Man. The the first black hero. For Besides right. Meteor Man. <laughs> oh, quickly we forget our black heroes. <laughs> Speaking of a black hero, let's I just wanted to give a shout out to Kool-Aid. Um Kool-Aid? You know, <laughs> Kool-Aid, uh you know, if you think about it, you know, as much as we've you know, we've grown up and so we're a lot more health conscious now. So we don't really drink Kool-Aid, but Kool-Aid was the provider of so much joy it was. as a young child. It was, it, was. It, it, it was the drink of champions. It was the drink of courage. And the, the thing I want to shout out to Kool-Aid is that Kool-Aid never fell into the health trap. You know, everybody else fell into it. You know, you got yeah, they McDonald's even fell into yeah, the mixed salad shaker. Yeah, everybody fell into it. You don't see Kool-Aid zero sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You know, Kool Aid is like, hey, hey, you either want it or you don't. <laughs> you want it or you don't. That should be their new slogan. Hey, you either want it or you don't. Get his hands up. <laughs> we ain't changing nothing. Yes, yes or no? <laughs> we we here, baby. We ain't, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, they, they you don't have that. You don't have Kool Aid like No, they went all, all around it. They made a whole nother like brand. They're like, <laughs> what is that? Milo or Milo or whatever. They're like, you can have all that shit. But Kool Aid, <laughs> that's my daddy name. <laughs> that's my daddy name. You can have all that Milo stuff. <laughs> Kool Aid, that's my daddy name. That's my daddy name. <laughs> yeah, you got to give it up for them. Cause, um, and Kool Aid turned people into household chefs right you used to <laughs> you pride yourself on your kool-aid making yeah. ability <laughs> first thing first thing that you went to town with your creativity was kool-aid mix the flavors. <laughs> mix the flavors. just for the fact you sit there like a mom on christmas and wait for somebody to take a sip and they be like what is this you like that's tropical punch orange and lime <laughs> like what <laughs> what <laughs> just mind blown like yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what I do is I put ice in first, and then I put the Kool Aid in. It'll stick to the ice, and then you stir that up. <laughs> then it all just it just just then evenly I, disperses. disperses. <laughs> oh, it turned people into straight chefs. <laughs> no, that is a valid. I point. actually got a jug of Kool Aid been sitting there for a week and a half. I, like, <laughs> I had one cup, and it's just been sitting there. I'm like. That's too much goddamn sugar in there. You drink, drink all that goddamn Kool Aid. I used the damn near the whole little thing. I was like, I don't, I don't really fuck with Kool Aid like that no more. The kids ain't around. They can't have Kool Aid. Like, you can't, don't be giving them Kool Aid. I'm like, yeah. You grew Dude, up how, on it? How much stuff did we have that was just like mainly sugar? I mean, because the generation right before us, they, they advertised sugar. Like to give to kids with medicine, they advertise yeah. sugar yeah. with cereal. Like I mean, it was like, yeah, yeah, give them, give them some sugar with it. They'll, put, it'll make it better. Cut up your strawberries. What'd you do? Sprinkle some sugar. Sprinkle on top sugar of on it, <laughs> yeah. dude. To the point where then they just started making like pop tarts. Ain't nothing but just different forms of sugar. Sugar with some color on it. <laughs> <laughs> you had a have you had a pop tart recently? Them shit. Yes, is nasty. <laughs> like I could not. Hey, don't say that. Eat. Erica still loves loves some pop tarts. She she hear you say that, man. It's gonna be <laughs> pop tarts. It's gonna be, pro it's gonna I be problems. I just let you know. I gave up on most candies. Taffy mm. candy to me is the only candy that still is like candy, but like yeah. Snickers, yeah. like uh, like anything anything like hard candies are mm. like 
life sa- <laughs> like lifesavers. You ever had a have you had a lifesaver? I have not had a lifesaver. They still stick to each other because ain't nobody fucking buying them shits. Like, remember, like lifesavers used to be the thing. It'd be like pop a little lifesaver. Yeah. Like, they kind of stick to each other. You kind of gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta snap break that it over bad your boy leg. Off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to kill your friend? What? Like, hold on one second. Let me lick on this one first <laughs> and loosen it up. <laughs> your hand be all sticky. He's you know what I, a green one. You know, I never got into was Pez. No, Pez has remember, always been shit. I remember people used to talk about buying the different Pez dispensers, and I'm like, why? Would but you that's what it them? was, right? Like that was what it was. It was the dispenser. It wasn't the candy. So it was just a toy. Yeah, I think no nobody in their right fucking mind liked chalk. And they fuck them up. Because that's all Pez is. It's just colored, different chalks. Yeah. The, the flavor was like that, Um, that what was that, that zebra gum? <laughs> Remember that zebra oh, gum? Oh, yeah. As soon that as zebra you stripe eat it, gum. two chews, and oh. you got to spit it out. <laughs> it was so good for them two so chews. Good. <laughs> you got to spit it you out. You had to look at it for a while. <laughs> you eat the whole pack just because you can't <laughs> only chew. He ate all that goddamn gum. Like, have you had a piece of gum? Yeah, you had it. <laughs> and you chew it too it long, and then it just get hard. You mean... <laughs> Jaw hurting now. You like, yeah, yeah. Like but that, you know what used to be my shit, Mister. Um, what were they? The chews, Mister Chews. Remember they were like this long, that long, like yellow. What the fuck were they? Let me see. Oh, oh, Charleston Chew. Charleston Chews. Yeah. Yeah, I used to I love to love those. Yep. The yellow one was, I think, vanilla. Then he had the pink strawberry. one, yeah. the strawberry, and the brown one was chocolate. Yeah, I used to. Yeah. I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm those with you. Used to be delicious. I, I but that was like a chocolate with right taffy now. on it. Yeah, that was like a chocolate with taffy. That's why yeah. I say like taffies, like Starburst are still fire. You yeah. can still pop yeah. a Starburst, but Starburst be sitting on the shelf. They ain't got no expiration date, so you fuck around. Eat the first one. It's nice and soft, but the other sixty-five <laughs> be hard as a brick. You like, you know, how long open the bag up, put one new one in here, and close it up. <laughs> right. You know how many years I called it strawburst and not starburst. I mean, I don't know if yeah. I was the only kid, but no, you wasn't. Strawburst was the name of it for yeah. a long time. Yeah. 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 It was. It's very. It's a very hard tradition or uh, transition to go to starburst. Yeah. It just yeah. don't make. It doesn't make any sense. Something it's about it. Not that strawburst makes no. more sense, but something about it just felt more candy name-ish. Yep. You know what I mean? And strawburst. strawburst. Yeah. Star? Yeah, starburst. Star? No. <clears throat> no. The starburst jelly beans, terrible. Mm. Don't get those. Don't ever try those. I do still mess with mambas. I'll mess with some mambas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mamba was good. Yep. Yeah, now they got like the long elbow size mamba. Like that thing got like six six little packs in it <laughs> with all the different colors. You know, we should do that. We should have um one of the ep- episodes. We should do like an old school candy episode and just go like. Like a taste test thing. Yeah, go get old school candies and stuff and we'll just wash it down with a glass or of Kool-Aid. we could do it on the goat debate. Mm. <laughs> we could do yeah. it on the goat debates. Yeah, what greatest. Top candy? Greatest yeah. candy. <laughs> Because you know they're going to be like, uh, payday bar. You know, those goddamn <laughs> fucking MF Dooms. <laughs> the payday bar was the best kid there. I used to go to the ball game. Like, Do you know you go to the sock hop too? <laughs> 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 when you left the sock hop, y'all go get a payday bar and a babe roof. The <laughs> <Right>. sock hop. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, we could, um, we could do it even by, um, by like eras, you know, like, cause it, you know, certain candies were just old school. Like, you, you know, you had yeah, yeah, yeah. those, um, shoot, what were those things called? What you call those it? Circus Remember peanuts. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> circus Them peanuts. old candies, just stuff like that, that <laughs> we never, ever ate like, or a good and plenty. Good and plenty. Um, oh, ba- what was it? Ba- bazooka gum. Bazooka gum. Bazooka gum. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard ass have... gum too. You used to have to work to get to the oh treat on that one. <laughs> and you only did it because as a kid, when you get a treat, I mean, I don't know about other kids, but I know we grew up together. It's like 
when you finally get something sweet, you just going to eat it. Like, it might be stale. It may not be that good to you. And you then give you that little <laughs> bazooka gum is already tiny. It ain't even like a big piece of gum. Nope. And it's like dense. <laughs> it's like, it's like astronaut food or something. Like. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's what they gave them World War II vets when they, when they was over there fighting a the good fight. They gave them them bazooka gum. Like, you're going to be on a, on this march for about three days. Two days. Right. <laughs> By the time and, you get there, it'll soften up for you. Right. And they come back, gum full flavor. <laughs> Smacking and shit. Blowing bubbles. <laughs> That's another thing you can't do uh-huh. as a grown ass man. You better not be blowing no damn bubbles. I see you. Keep your gum in your mouth, bro. <laughs> you damn that can't even chew gum as a grown man. <laughs> like you better get whatever, get that taste out the that onion hey. and spit that shit out. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can't do as a grown man. You can't eat. Popsicles that are long anymore. Nope. You can't eat Hot ice dogs. cream cones. You can't just be <laughs> enjoying yourself. Nigga, go to work. Right. <laughs> you get in the bathroom, eat that ice cream, and be done with it. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard life, man. And you don't even know until somebody tells you. They'll be like, nigga, you came out here with a hot dog? You're like, <laughs> it's a barbecue. <laughs> what do you mean? It's a. It's a Five-year-old's barbecue. What else was they have? Ribs? <laughs> on the rib? like, all right, put that all down that, and all that, out, all that outdoor manliness, then you go home and put your bonnet on <laughs> put your before you go to bed. <laughs> Baby, see my bonnet? <laughs> is, is this yours or mine? Yeah. Is this one? <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes no sense. That's why I say, don't judge. <laughs> don't judge people. Because... Especially you got dreads. I know you've been in compromising positions before. Right. Like, <laughs> there's nothing hard about dreads. Oh, uh, is uh, is it hard to swim in dreads? You, I mean, so like I'm, I'm so. I got a lot of people that have dreads. Like I got friends, you know, what I'm saying family, all that shit. But like, I was I didn't educate myself on dreads. So as I've started getting longer and longer, and it's. This is another thing that you, that you don't have to worry about when you're just getting a haircut. A barber know how to do a fade. What do you go from L.A. to New York to Texas? Yeah. Hey, just give me a taper. Give me this. You know what I mean? Like, they know it ain't too much knowledge that they can tell you about your hair. or they, You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's pretty pretty standard once you in that. Yeah. But dreads, every person who who does your dreads isn't necessarily like what they would call a loctician, which mm. is somebody who, like, specializes in, in dreadlocks. When I say specialize, like some of them might have crystals. It probably incense burning. When you go there, they probably gonna do it at their house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it ain't gonna be at a shop. Those people like are, are deep into correct. it. So like I've been talking to a lot of them because I was told like uh you can't wash your hair for two weeks. Like don't wash your hair you know, wash your hair like every two weeks. Before that it was like wash your hair every month. But like they're like as you start locking you can wash your hair every two weeks. But then, like, you talk to these lacticians, they're like, I wash my hair, like, or I rinse my hair out every day with water. And I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, what about when you get a retwist? Well, yeah, you know, maybe, like, three or f- three days or so after I get a retwist. But I wash my hair with, like, water. I rinse my hair out, and I just mm. let it air dry. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. You know, or, like, I, you know, they wrap it up in a towel or whatever. But, um, so I'm starting to learn that. But swimming... I always thought you couldn't go swimming with your damn dreads, right? Like, I'm in the water like this at the beach, you know what I mean? Try not to get my hair wet like a black female on prom night. <laughs> they said try not to get my hair wet. <laughs> All they're right. Like, they're like, right. bro, what do you All think right. people in Jamaica that got dreads, you think they don't get in the water? I'm like, oh, hold on one sec, hold on one sec. I got to grab something. One sec. All right, man. Oh, my gosh. This, uh, this lock talk. Hair talk. Yo, subscribe to the channel, yo. Uh, let's see. Let's just play some music while it's going. Do with our guests lead the show. We have to make do. It's a filthy time, you know. 
He's back. My All right. <clears throat> My, um, <clears throat> I have sensory overload from uh, feminine that can't <laughs> swim with my hair and let's just get to something more manly. Uh, the NFL. Um, <laughs> currently, uh, free agency is going on. And um, we're going to talk yes. about your team, bro, because mine ain't really doing nothing. So neither none of my teams are really doing anything uh, during the draft right now. But your Raiders done made, you know, they done made a couple changes. What you thinking? I mean, you've been, you been watching it? Kind of. I mean, I've seen that they've made some, you know, some some power moves and stuff like that. Um, this is my take on the Raiders, and this is my take every single Hold on, hold on. What is, your, what is your definition of a, a power move? Cause well, hold on, okay. Let me, <laughs> I'll, I'll, let me get to that at the point, too. Okay, okay, okay. I'll address that. The Raiders do the same shit every year, hmm. which is we like to incite hope. Hmm. We love it. That's what sells tickets. That's what gets the crowd riled up. That's what, you know, gets the fans back pumping for this is this is our year. Silver and black is back, baby. This is our, you know what I mean? Like all of the slogans and stuff like that. Hmm. And every year we don't do anything different than the year before. Hmm. Now, the reason why I say that they made some like moves progressively is because I feel like our new head coach provides a different tone to the Raiders because I think all the coaches wanted to win so bad. So like it was all about players and getting, <coughs> getting the best players and they thought that was going to win. But I think AD or uh, yeah, AD is uh he's more, or is it AJ? AJ? It's AJ, right? Adrian, coach? what's the fuck his name? You talking about the coach? Yeah. Damn, I don't forget the head coach's I know name. It's AD. Um, but yeah, what I feel like he's doing um, is he's doing what every uh, AP, Antonio oh. Pierce. Um, oh. What I feel like he's doing is he's bringing back old school coaching to the point where, like, hey, we're a family, we're a team, like, the respect of each other, respect the defense, respect the offense. We need each other's back and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like towards the end of our season, mm -hmm. when he was in that role, that's why they did so good <coughs> is because it wasn't like, you know, I'm here for me. I'm, I'm here to catch the ball. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't that mentality that a lot of people had. Like, and I don't think a lot of people, you know, like Crosby and stuff like that, like he was a team player. Like he believed in the team and stuff like that. He tried to bring good energy, but I feel like it wasn't reciprocated as far as the coaching staff because the coaching staff, every coach that came there kind of was like a gateway, you know what I mean? Like breaking into either breaking into retirement, breaking into the NFL, breaking into like, oh, I got fired at my last job, so I needed a job. Like, let me go out here. You guys are already a terrible team. We win a couple games. Maybe they'll keep me around a couple years. I can collect some more dollars. But like, I don't. I feel like now it's like that powerhouse of mentality of like, hey, we've always had good players. We've always been a good team. If we just bring all of that together, it's like uh, <laughs> was that movie Strong Side, Left Side? You know what I'm saying? Like that <laughs> Denzel Washington type of mentality to be like, y'all are all dope players, but y'all can't do nothing if y'all don't play as a team. And respect each other oh. as a team. All right, so that's that's cool. You know, that's real cool. So how in theory, does in how does Gardner Minshew uh, fulfill that 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 philosophy? I just want to understand. I see the family. I see the we're all great. Left side, strong side. I, every, I see that every every move. Gardner. Is. Gardner. I just think some things are out of, out of the, like the team's hands. They're still mm. scouts, you know, AR directors and all of these other people that still need to get, yeah. you know, quotas and all of this type of stuff. And you know mm. what I mean? I feel like a lot of that type of stuff is out of their hands when it comes mm. to that. But and then and then so so who would you on your team right now? Who would you say are the top three players? Like, like, let's say, let's go to what you said. Like, we're a family. We're strong. 
we do better together. And if you had three names of the Raiders that you were going to build from, build around, who who are the top players? Um, Max Crosby. Max Crosby. Um, probably, probably Trayvon Woodard, our safety. Huh. Um, because our DBs, our DBs are all like I, I always talk shit about our DBs. Our DBs are my height <laughs> you know, out there uh, doing absolutely nothing. Um, who's our quarter? Who's our quarterback this year? I don't even know. Uh, your quarterback last year was Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, it was Garoppolo, and you benched him. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know who's our quarterback. And then you just brought in Gardner Minshew from the Colts. Uh, O'Connell is the backup, right? O'Connell um, was the backup. He did pretty. He did decent for a backup. I don't like Garoppolo. I never liked Garoppolo. I didn't like him when he was in San Francisco. I don't. I don't, <clears> just, I don't like his name saying it. Um, so I don't think. I don't think it's him. I think Marcus Epps is, Epps is pretty good too. Um, hmm. So, I don't know, man. Like we, we all. I don't know. We've we've had so many great players that left the organization. <sighs> I'm just surprised you didn't say Devonte Adams. Like, how is Devonte Adams not? I mean, he's like one of the best in the league. Like, understandably, the, understandably. And but then and I'll, then how do you leave out Josh Jacobs? Like, one of the best know. running backs in the league. Because Josh Jacobs. Didn't run like he ran for who was he on? Uh, Lions, right? Or not Lions? Who did where did he come from? Lions, right? Uh, I didn't, you know, he didn't really hit my radar until he got. Oh, no, he was with I'm thinking of this. Was he in college with Alabama, right? Yeah, he was from Alabama, I think. Um. Yeah, yeah, he was in Alabama. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's I think you just get like he came yeah, out he only, hard. Yeah, he only played for the Raiders. Yeah, I think he he came he comes out hard, right? His his rookie year. Uh-huh. But because the team ain't teaming, uh-huh. people just be like it's like the Jamarcus Russell shit. Like you just come out and you just be like, "Well, I'm just going to collect this Hundreds of million dollars, and look like nigga, we y'all y'all already coming out here with a losing mentality, cause that's what we fucking are. It's like the bad news bears, like hey, we stink. We just got a team. No, Let's I get that. I guess I'm saying, football. but if you were, if you were trying to change that culture and say that, you know, let's move towards a winning culture, then he seems like him, Devonte, um, or Devonta. One of the, which one, which yeah. one it is? Um. And maybe Max Crosby seem like three pillars that you can build on. Because even though he didn't do amazing last year, that's because the rest of the team was trash. You can only do so much, as a, especially as a running back. <clears throat> so so my, my surprise was for y'all to let Josh Jacobs go. Oh. He's gone. I feel like I'm breaking this news to you. And he's yeah. he's gone. I don't, th- I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I think I'm glad he's gone because he's, he's a very good running back. He's a very good kid. I think he needs to go somewhere um, that's going to appreciate him and use him to his full fucking potential. Raiders have a lot of discipline that they need to fucking get through. Like, and if they can't get a, like a, and play like a disciplined <clears throat> team, we've always had great running backs. We've always had a good quarterback. We've always had a great, you know, um, linebackers and and safeties like we've had great wide receivers but none of that means anything if they don't play like a fucking team like every time like every time like even when um like back in the day when um randy moss was out there right like he'd be like just frustrated everybody's frustrated because nobody's doing anything (laughs) but for themselves yeah you know what i mean and truthfully <clears throat> Truthfully, that sounds like your boy Devontae because he was slinging his helmet 
Last year, he was frustrated. Pissed. He's like, bro, I'm what wide am I open. Doing? I'm getting open. Yeah. You throwing the ball over my head into the <laughs> ground. Like, I'm yep. surprised he's even still there. And I and I think I think I really our am. coach has a lot to do with that culture, right? I, I think I, I think he might. That that's probably the type of coach that he's going to respond to, like somebody who's going to be like, "We're going to get all this shit tight. We're going to bring it to." I think this season, I haven't looked at their our, our roster or anything like that. I haven't paid any attention to any draft picks or or talks, but I feel like if AP stays the coach, that's what he's working on. I think he's working on team ball and not individual. And I feel like the Raiders have always been an individual team. Like, it's one person on that team that, you know, the name is rang out. But it's all these fucking superstars on the fucking team. Like, Max Crosby would be saying it. He'd be like, uh, like, we're a great team. You know, I'm out here giving my heart and blah, blah, blah. Like, and he does. He plays every down like it's his last goddamn down that he's going to play. But I just feel like the team just – um and I think it's it's that that's just that Raiders like that's just what we've been we've been bullies of the NFL most penalties consecutively year after year after year after year you know what I'm saying so it's just it's just a a, a lot of a lot of that type of stuff that goes on yeah yeah I was um yeah I don't know man the 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 draft is always a sad place for Cowboy fans because Jerry Jones does nothing during the draft it's like just a waste of time to even pay attention to it for your team. It's like I watch the draft and pay attention so I know what other teams are doing. Yeah. <laughs> I know what, you know, our division rivals are doing. Like like dude, if, if the I think that the Commanders, well you know, in the NFC East is the Cowboys, Eagles, Commanders, Giants. I, I have to look at the record but the 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 Giants and the Commanders had to be two of the bottom teams in the league, not just in the division, right? But when I say that they making moves to try to get better, I mean, I, I guess I can't think of what a whole lot that the Giants did, but the Commanders, they did a lot. Well, I they mean, did. look at their, they changed their whole ownership, right? Like, you know, Maddie Johnson's part of the ownership committee now. Like, I they feel like, and that, was, that happened in the middle of the season. Like, I was still living out there in D.C. when that happened, and it was like a big thing to get old boy out of there because it was no power. It was no, no moves being made. Yep. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, well, cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can and feel I'm, it. You can feel yeah. the difference. Yep. You can feel it. They, they took our defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn. He's the head coach now. They 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 got running backs. They got receivers. They getting – he done brought, like, I think maybe three defensive players from the Cowboys over to the commanders. I'm like, mm. bro, okay, it's, it's one thing – to like like you you in a division with uh with the chiefs right so it's like which we beat every year y'all be skunking the chiefs yeah it, it would it make you feel some kind of way for Devonte adams to go to the chiefs like dude all these other teams is like, <laughs> like just yeah. go he somewhere just, else he just gonna he just gonna lose <laughs> you going over there you know we he, beat him nigga. right like, he gonna lose to y'all they, they might win a Super Bowl, but y'all, y'all gonna lose to the Raiders. <laughs> you gonna lose to the Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> although, the Raiders. although they just came and won a Super Bowl in your house, it wasn't against you. What? That, and that was some cold. But it was shit, in your right? house. Like we have our right, our Bay Area rivals. Well, not no more, but still our Bay Area rivals, San Francisco, yeah. in our house. Then yeah. we got the people that we whoop on every year in our house. And they play the Super Bowl before any of us in our brand new stadium in our house. And in they win house. it. And they, they throw win. in red, yellow, and white confetti all over the goddamn seats. <laughs> and, and Raider fans just sitting there like. <laughs> With our stupid hats on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a, hard, it was a very heartfelt moment. I was just like, this is crazy. They at, they at the before any of them can step on a Super Bowl stage in your house. They got you, they, and, they, and that that was the first time. That, I mean, not the first time, but like it, recently with the new stadium, you figure they redid uh, Tampa. Um, mm. I, I think they redid Tampa when when Brady went out there, but I know Brady won the year that they he went to Tampa, 
and then they they did a uh, SoFi, and then the first Super Bowl there, then the Rams won there, then they do Allegiant, <laughs> then y'all uh y'all watching at the casino nearby. Can't can't even get tickets to it. They like <laughs> I think it's it's me, it's Max. It's Max. <laughs> yeah, my locker room is right there. Like, that ain't your locker room. That's Mahomes. <laughs> right. locker room. Not today. <laughs> Speaking of Super Bowl, how did you feel about Ursher's performance? You know, it was different because I watched it with like a lot of girls. Mm. And I mean, there was men there too, but girls tend to elevate, uh, you know, a Usher performance. <laughs> so it's like, I, I almost couldn't just appreciate it for what it was without all the fanfare. So yeah. I, I, in the beginning, I wasn't impressed. I was just kind of like, all right, somewhere around when he switched to the roller skates, I was like, okay, now he, now he trying to show out. And from the roller skates on, I felt like he, he put his stamp on it. And then, so ultimately I felt like he did, he did good. He did. Good. I'm not like a huge Usher fan. So I wasn't like, crazy excited about him performing and nothing like that but for what it's worth objectively i felt like he did his thing i hated it i thought it was <laughs> a waste of 30 minutes a waste a just wa complete he he just blew, shouldn't even I turn the mics on that he like i first of all he was cheap right he's already there he has a residency in vegas right yeah hey let's get this to do it he stays fucking up right Right there, right? right. We, we gotta pay him what we would pay somebody to fly him in, their whole team. Like there everybody here. I, like I mean, I don't know that that's true, but let's go with it. Let's go with okay. it. Okay. He's cheap. I like the fact I'm not saying that he was cheap, but I'm just saying he's here already. Yeah, right. Um, overall it's cheap. Overall it's cheap. So I felt like he gave that type of performance. Secondly, I enjoyed the fact that he kept like a lot of Las Vegas things that were going on like he had you know the the flippers and the, the flamingo girls and like it was real las vegas at the beginning and i appreciated right. that part of it yeah yeah i didn't appreciate bringing the energy down consistently with and i know it's usher so it's he's he's a he's a love song you know what i mean like it's an r&b yeah. artist so yeah it's not going to be high tempo high energy the entire time I, I didn't like when he put the skates on. I thought you're trying to get your play for your roller skating career you got back in Atlanta. <laughs> like I think that's that was stupid. Didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that he brought JD, um, Lil John, and Ludacris out when he has so many more relevant. Hit make and I understand. Like uh, I brought the A to the the D, you know, L, you know, Las Vegas. I brought the like I get that, Mama. We made it. Look at us. Like yeah. Cool. But let's keep it real. Nobody even looks at you like Atlanta. Nobody even. I think most you people you ask them where's where's Usher from? They <laughs> Tennessee. Uh, Flint. Vegas. Like, I don't... He's from Vegas, right? Like he's from Vegas. I, I would bet twenty out of every twenty five fans don't really know. No, exactly. Yeah, and I just I didn't like it for a, a lot of those reasons, and I felt like it was just like he just maybe yeah. I don't like Usher. I'm about I about to say like you hate you just being a hater, man. Maybe I don't like you, Usher. <laughs> I just you, feel like all you this. can't even articulate. <laughs> Like that wasn't you can't, the, you can't even articulate what it actually is. Like, eh, he just it just you know he was like he was there. He's like Every, singing and uh. <laughs> everybody else had Super Bowl performances. Something right. that you didn't you ain't gonna be able to see. I felt like he just took one of his shows that he mm -hmm. does in Vegas because he has a residency there, and mm -hmm. he did it in front of the Super Bowl stage. I feel like right now if this weekend we fly to. Las Vegas and go to an Usher show, he gonna be skating in a black light <laughs> <laughs> in a circle. But I think could, could, is there a possibility he's like the victim of his own uh, performance life? It's like because he performs so much, 
it just seems like just another performance. It's almost like yes. when Chris Brown did it or, uh, I mean, when Chris Brown, if Chris Brown did it or when no, Bruno Mars Brown, did it. His energy is way higher than Usher. Let's just get that out, That's the, a fact. out the gate. Chris That's Brown's energy. So I don't think it'll be a regular Chris And I Brown agree with show. you on the song selection. Like, there were some times that I was like, why are you going there? Just because yeah. you have it in the arsenal. Yeah. Don't mean you need to use it. Like, no, let's just keep it. <laughs> like, <laughs> shh. <laughs> that took three minutes for you. <laughs> right. And it is not studio yeah. quality. You've been right. just roller skating. And you came right. out here trying to ha, ha, ha. Yeah. 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 Alicia Keys and crack. You know what I mean? Like, why is Alicia Keys there? Why is she every fucking way? Every time Alicia Keys is doing something somewhere alicia keys ain't been had a goddamn song since people were in overalls <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen we have entered the the hater portion of the show <laughs> i just i'm just where saying. everybody can get it everybody why is it why is cat williams on every show you had one good podcast That's you said one. it That's you said it thing. we heard you you're gonna go to everybody's show to tell us about how everybody steals your jokes? My G, it was driving a car. It's not that deep. The joke wasn't that good, okay? I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it, because I was going to bring that shit up, too. I'm tired of seeing him. I didn't even realize it was a new thing. I t When Erica was asking me about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw he was on Shannon. She was like, oh, you got to hear what he said. I'm thinking it's something brand new. When I heard it, I'm like, he, he was always. just talking about this like a couple years ago. He always <laughs> says it. He, you know how you know how it's like it's like he's he's the black Donald Trump to me, right? Because uh. he's not invited to the party, but he's looked through the window of the party. Like he's got the invite, right? Uh. He's he's been invited to the party, but he's not invited to the party because he don't go to those type of parties. So, but he then he throws a party, and none of them are like, oh, I'm not going to your party, and he's mad. Right, because nobody wants to go to his party, so he's shitting on everybody else's party all the time. So what? So what? Them people did whatever. Like, so what? Right. This is Hollywood. Some people go to Hollywood and say, I'll do anything that I have to do to make it in this business. And that includes getting on my knees. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Speaking of that, great transition. We should talk about Diddy <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, the, and the boy diddling. That it seems like he's Diddy's been. a monster, bro. He's no different to me than Harvey Weinstein. Like, mm. He's no different. Diddy's a monster, bro. Mm. When you talk about like drugging people to the point of like you know alleged, well not alleged because he got convicted, but like Bill Cosby level to the mm. point where like you at a party, I'm gonna make you do some stuff, videotape it, show you the tape the next day, and hold you hostage on your contract. Like yeah. that's a monster, bro. And, and you feel like that's Diddy. Yes. That's Diddy. I feel like that's Diddy because how do you have one of the most successful record labels of all time and you don't have, z you have no artist? Look at, case in point, R let's just talk recently. Okay. Machine Gun Kelly, right? Okay. Machine Gun Kelly was, he was a machine gun when he spit. Yeah. You see Machine Gun Kelly now? Now he's got... Black nails, he looks like an avatar or an anime character. Like oh. how 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 are you that and now you're this? And I understand because like when people when Lil Wayne started skateboarding, he was like, I, I always skateboarded when I was a kid. Like you just guys just know me as a rapper. So but he's still smoking weed, pant you know what I mean? Like he ain't out there, <laughs> you know what I mean? He didn't yeah. start painting his nails and wearing makeup and stuff like that. Like machine. Well, are you saying me. MGK is on Bad Boy? He was on Bad Boy. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't he know was that. on Bad Boy at, at a point in time of, of his career, right? And then he got out of his kind of, I don't know if his time was up or whatever, but once it was, he turned into an anime character. Huh. And he still makes, you know, he's like a Post Malone, like where you were one thing when you came out and people thought that was you, but now you're wearing Daisy Dukes strumming a guitar. You know what I mean? Like, wait a minute. Like, hold on, hold on, but... Why is this an indict on Diddy? Like you, you put I'm, piece it together. I'm just Let saying, me know. Let me know. I'm saying people are manipulated into portraying themselves a certain way, and 
in the Diddy camp, French Montana, right? French Montana was on on Bad Boy. French Montana came out swinging, hardcore rapper and all that other stuff. Then all of the accusations came out about French Montana and all this other stuff. He got off a of Bad Boy. Now he's living his life and doing whatever the hell he's doing. But those are the only two recent artists that you can say were on the Bad Boy label. And both of them, while they were on the Bad Boy label, were speaking this like treated the same way that a lot of these other people that career didn't last as long. But I feel like it's like the Hollywood thing. Like I'm willing to do whatever I gotta do to make it in this industry, including whatever the hell that case may be. And I feel like they didn't have a problem with it because perhaps they are those type of people, right? Like maybe they are into men and women and you know what I mean? Like you you don't know just because somebody's a hardcore rapper doesn't mean that they're not also that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to to get more into the Diddy shit, I just feel like it's been too long of the Diddy, like people have been joking around about Diddy parties forever. Forever they've been joking around about Diddy parties and how, how active it gets in these parties. I feel like this, one thing, one thing I will say, to, in, in Diddy's defense, Who gives a fuck that Diddy is bisexual and likes men and all this other? Who gives a fuck, right? The part that I have a problem with about it is if someone who isn't like that and you manipulate them into that and now you record it and then you hold that and, it, like, people will tell you it happens across the board. It's just not fucking Diddy. He's not the only person that does that type of stuff. But I think he invented it in the hip hop culture where it wasn't so much present at the time. No, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't say that. Can't say that because African Bambada got the finger pointed at him by the guy that he used to rape. Mm. And he actually came out, uh, his name is Poppy. Um, he actually came out, Hassan, um, I forget his last name. But anyway, if you look up Hassan, I think they called him Poppy, a little pop, young Poppy, something like that. But anyway, he used to be like, like Africa's like right hand man, and he he like just a couple of years ago, like actually came out and was saying what Africa used to do to him, what he used to have him and his homeboy do to each other while he watched and masturbated and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm thinking, yo. When you stand back from it, it's like, yo, hip hop has got some dark, some dark secrets. Like, so, I mean, let's just say this Diddy thing is, you know, is true. We don't, I don't know. I hear what you're saying. I do believe where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, for years, I heard about R. Kelly. We see that situation. I didn't know nothing about African Bambada. That threw me off. But yeah. you see him, Russell Simmons, you hear stuff about him. It's like, Okay, it, it for me as a rapper that spent a large part of my life trying to get into those circles, yeah. trying to be on those labels, trying to shake hands with those gentlemen to find out that this type of thing was going on behind the scene. It's like all I could do is like, thank God I ain't make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's but like, like at that point, I feel like like we're saying, right? It's a choice that people make, right? And sometimes the choice is made for them in situations like Bill Cosby drugging people, Diddy, you know, allegedly drugging people and stuff like that to perform these different, um, you know, acts or whatever, you know, rituals as they're trying to, you know, label it and stuff like that. But I also feel like in those circles, at those levels, and it's just outside looking in, I'm just thinking, it's have you have you ever like had power before, right? And I'm talking about like not just like power as in like your dad, so you have power over, each, but like power over people, like hmm. a boss, like a, a fucking like this is my empire. I'm the fucking boss, like like a king who hmm. comes in and fucking be like, and somebody comes, my sorry, my lord, like. That's yeah. the level of power that some of these people, <sighs> it's different. not only did they think that they had, but people 
exuded to like they gave them that energy as if they had power over them. So yeah. at some point, they felt like what they were doing was what they were supposed to be doing in those situations. I feel like you know what I mean. Like, mm. not saying that they were supposed to be doing it, but I feel like, like even Louis C.K. Right, he's back doing comedy. And he he like puts his business out there. He's like everybody knows my business. He's like, you know, he's like I envy you guys. He's like. You can jack off in front of people. Nobody cares. He's like, but I, I show up and people are like, oh, don't jack off in front of me, Lewis. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> because everybody knows his story now. You know, they yeah, know his yeah. kink. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, like, I mean, you, nobody's talking about Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx used to throw Diddy parties, and he talks about him and Diddy partying and stuff like that. And there's been speculations about Jamie Foxx and how Jamie Foxx does parties and stuff like that. I feel like some people so fucking what that they're freaky and they go both ways and they have all these you know type of scenarios and stuff like that you don't want to go to the party don't go to the party i don't feel like it's right to out them for the, what they decide to do i feel like it's wrong when you get manipulated into the point of now you made me do something that i would have never done had i been in my right mind energy and vibe something you've done has altered my decision making process and that's wrong but but I, I agree with you but the i think i think therein lies the convoluted issue is that power and your dreams of success are even more intoxicating than any drug absolutely and so and so you have somebody like diddy that can say I didn't drug you, Cassie. You know, I'm, I know that got yeah. settled, so we just we won't use Cassie's name. I'll use yeah. a a completely different name, okay? Chassis, right? Mm -hmm. So like Chassie, yeah, is intoxicated by the bad boy logo. He pulls up in a Rolls Royce. They jump in. They fly out. They go someplace. He's he they they she eats what she wants. She's drinking champagne on the beach. She's first class and Emirates flights. It's it's all that's way more intoxicating because now you can see th the peak of your life shifting forever, right? Yeah. This isn't like a, a day's high. This no, is not no. like a drink for a party. This is like my life and everybody I know, the life that I choose, we it all changes. That's a crazy high. And now that person is like whatever whatever it's even harder to not fall into that and so i i hear what you're saying but i think that the moment that i think the moment that that spell is cast over you it is you're intoxicated from then on you're almost intoxicated until something happens for something you know what i mean until like the 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 wizard is seen behind the veil like absolutely you're I, in i agree i agree with everything that you're saying and i feel like that's exactly what i'm saying also what what i'm saying is morally it's wrong because you know you are in an influential position of power and i feel like that's how it's being looked at it's like I'm regular old person high off of the just, I, I got an Uber here, you know what I mean? But now I pull up to this mansion, there's models all over the fucking place, there's wheat, there's all these drugs and celebrities that I've never, you know what I mean? And I'm exposed to this life, and now you're like, suck my, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, well, I'm here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it reminds me of, there's like, a, there's like this uh, social, um, I don't know if they called it a study, but whatever. It's like they would have somebody like like let's say you're like the the you know the experiment, right? They have you show up for an interview. You walk into this office and there's like four other people sitting in the lobby, right? And so you sit down and so you just kind of figure oh, they're probably here for the interview too. So now it's like all five of you. And then there's like a bell, and then everybody stands up. And you're like looking around like, what are they standing up for? Mm. And then there's another bell, and then they all sit down. And a few moments later, there's another bell, and then everybody stands up. Every time they did it, eventually, 
the person that had no clue why everybody's standing up stood up. Yeah. And then yeah. sat back down. Yeah. And then stood up and sat back down, right? Yeah. And it, it shows how like that herd mentality yeah. happens. So imagine that same scenario that you just created. And now it's like, hey, oh yeah, y'all, y'all wanna go upstairs? Hey, everybody else is leaving, but y'all cool. Y'all wanna go? We we going to, we going to the third floor. Y'all wanna go? Oh yeah, let's go. We, we turn up, whatever. Yes. We go upstairs and now we up there. Next thing you know, there's like a line forming. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> You can't really see in front of the line. <laughs> it's just lying about what are they doing up there? The lines yeah. get shorter. And as you get closer, you see him. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's three people in front of you, two people behind you. Like, oh, wanna... Ain't nobody got out of line. Everybody just be like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> but I think for those people, and I, I don't even want to go as far as like those to people. Do what exact like whatever it takes. Whatever and, it takes. And and, and, and like you said, it's it's a, it's a choice. But then you got people like Terry Crews that it wasn't a choice. Like it's it just yeah. it's just thrown on you. That's why I told Erica. I said, I said I'm I'm so happy sometimes that I did. It it was a large part of my life. So I still it's still hard for me to be like I'm glad I was never in that light. Yeah. It's still hard for me to completely say that, but I'm glad I was never in those positions because you don't know, bro. Like you find yourself in a situation. Next thing you know, you in jail for 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean, look at shine. Yeah. Shine wasn't doing nothing gay. Shine's riding for the homie. And next thing you know, he in jail. Like you was just living your best dreams out of Barbados. And now you in the pen. Like, yeah, it, t- it changed that fast. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like that that's, that's why it's so wrong is because those it's a manipulation tactic it is that it is the the fear of missing out what do they call it fomo like the fear of missing out missing out yeah and then yep. also like my dreams are right here it's just a dick sucking away <laughs> you know what i mean like, <laughs> like it's just one penis it's like it's not one. it's not like it's a, a row it's like I mean, <laughs> it's one penis. I mean, at this point, it's been getting Everybody sucked else. for like an hour and a half. <laughs> it can't, it can't stay up that much longer. It's, so. long. it's not ready. Yeah. Like, the, and I feel, I feel maybe like, it gets done before I get there, yeah, maybe, and I yeah. still get credit. <laughs> like, like, for being here. <laughs> like maybe, maybe the guy in front I'm of me is really and good. I'm part of y'all, <laughs> and I'm part of y'all. <laughs> maybe the guy in front of me is like really good, and he finishes this thing off. And the rest of us just get credit, credit, because <laughs> we we were here. We were here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, and and I oh. feel like that's 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 the part. Like even like Bill Cosby, they're like, <laughs> I, I, I'm on, I'm on the fence. It's like rumor rumors have been circulating about Diddy's parties forever, forever. And now you're an opportunity to meet Diddy, and he invites you to a party. How do you not think something? That you heard before. You're, you're going you... to you're going to the party. You're going to the party, right? I'm telling you're... you right now, you're going to the party. There isn't a celebrity on this planet, even if you had heard it could have been R. Kelly during the time that he was hearing that people were hearing about stuff and he hadn't got accused yet of anything crazy. Because they did. They it, still went to an R. Kelly exactly. party. Exactly. Yeah. It, it is impossible. You don't you don't move to LA to yeah. deny an opportunity and an a invite to a massive because first off you're not getting invited by the celebrity so yeah. you're not gonna have that tip off like let's just say you looked at it like i don't know man diddy kind of be on some walk you're not gonna hear about it from diddy no. you're gonna hear about it in the studio talking yeah. to a producer yeah. that's going with his man who wrote some of diddy's joints he wrote the last joint with diddy and luda yeah, and, yeah. and he wants you to meet luda and they're gonna meet at diddy's it's gonna be a situation you're not thinking diddy you thinking oh shoot i'm gonna meet blah 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 we can politic yeah. okay yeah. cool we're gonna let's do it yeah and then you get there and you hear the gawk 3000 happening <laughs> in the corner <laughs> you like this is what you did this part? yeah like I'm telling you, and and that's uh, to me uh, that's 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 where I'm I'd be on the fence. But I feel like to allegedly videotape it 
and to hold people's careers ransom That's if you're up. not at my becking call and my basically my slave yeah. to you know whatever's going on yeah, you did that's not. the that's the that's the monster part about yeah, about yeah. it. You know what I mean? And that's yeah, why I'm yeah, like, yeah. that's why I compare him to who I compared him to is because I feel like that's what's being accused. And if that is the case, yeah. then that's you're, you're a monster. You're a monster. Yeah, absolutely. But if it's monster. if it's you just fuck around and pe- people know you fuck around and you come to a party and I'm over here fucking around and you decide to lay on the bed too and fuck around and now you ashamed. Because you fucked around, and now you want some type of money. Like, oh, you forced me to do it, like, all of this right. type of stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's like what Bill Cosby stuff. Like, you talking about shit that happened in the 60s, 70s, and now here we are in the 2000s. And now, oh, I, you know, I, I just didn't want to tell anybody. And it's like, at some point, as becoming yeah. even a parent, you <sighs> have to have that playing on repeat in the back of your head. Yeah. About how you were done, and maybe, maybe you know, and maybe some of them were. I, d- I didn't pay too much to the case. They were probably screaming it from the mountaintops. But this is Jello Pudding Man. Who gonna right. believe that? You know what I mean? And then, yeah. yeah, most of them, it just came out later, and that's what frustrated me about that because, you know, that was also kind of in the early parts of like the Me Too movement where you yeah. you couldn't even ask questions. No without you victim shaming. Yes. And it's like, yo, I'm not, everybody in any situation you deserve to be to questioned. explain yourself. <laughs> right, like anybody yeah. wants to know what happened. I mean, that's what happens yeah. in, in the court of law. So it's like, for for you to say this happened, first off, y'all going to Club 54 and Club Nouveau and all of that, like you knew what was going on. Yep. They offered you Coke at the door. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. told you we were all out of Chardonnay, but we still got Coke. They, they on the table, like, hold on one second. <laughs> you know right. I mean? Now, like, all of a sudden, he drugged me. He probably did. He might have drugged you along with three or four other people. Yeah. But the question is, did you want to get drugged? Yeah. You, you probably were okay with getting drugged. You just weren't okay with then what happened. Like, you didn't know where you were going to get. Yeah, that's how I feel about a lot of his. Like you was cool with the partying until yep. the partying made you lose control. Yeah, and then you didn't like what the other person did. However, I bet you right up to that point, you was all with it. You was yeah. telling them, "Oh, I'm I came to party. I came <laughs> show me where the party at." And then later on, you're like, "Why did he show me where the party was?" Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And I, you know, I have I have daughters and I have sons, and I'm like. Yep. You know, I, I tr- like I try to like just like, hey, if you don't want to do something, don't do it, especially if you don't know how you're going to react to whatever it is that right. is being asked of you to do. Right. So if you've never you you don't know what you're like on, on weed, smoke some weed in in your room by yourself to see how you react to something before you go out to a party. And the first time you smoke weed is around a whole bunch of horny boys or girls. And now you don't smoke weed and you don't know how you're going to even react to these things. Or you've never been drunk before in front of people. Like, it's yeah. a whole different, and I, I take personal experience. Like, it's a whole different high. It's a whole different being drunk when yeah. you're involved in different variables and situations and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I got I to gotta grab something again. One second. Okay, he's going to grab something. Let me find some music while he grabs something. Pause. Especially after sitting here talking about the Hollywood escapades and then <clears throat> he then follows it up with I gotta go grab something wow wow I didn't even I mean he's my cousin but I'll be honest like we they didn't really have like the 23 and me and you know my, my, the, hey, my hey, uh, headphones are still on oh uh, yeah I have so, these on when I oh. leave they're cordless so like the whole walk over you didn't have to take them off no i had to take them off at all i I kept them on so Um, so this system is odd there are times that there's like ai that kind of cuts in and it'll use your voice to then say weird stuff hmm, like that's strange it's it's i I know ai is i know ai is taking over but ai is different man yeah, that's crazy. I know you probably doubt it, but dude, you can't doubt AI. I mean, come on, it's, it's, that's that's a hundred percent true. So, I mean, we went really, really dark. Let's uh, <laughs> let's end the show on a light note. I would like to know if you are um, if you're a cat or a dog person. Neither. 
I've Dang. learned over the years that I hate all animals. I didn't even think people like you existed. I thought I like everybody them. had some favoritism no. of some domesticated animal. You Not me. nothing. All nothing. trash. No, I don't like any animals. I don't like I and I have a dog. And I don't like him. I don't like his friend dogs. I don't like your dogs. I don't like my neighbor. Like I don't so like you, you have any bad experiences as a kid or no, like I've you know, I've always had a pet. You know what I'm saying? I have Rottweilers, pit bulls, poodles, mutts. Um But you didn't like any of them. No, I like them. My current dog has made me pay attention to pets more. Hmm. I don't like this. I don't like coming at your house. Not not you, but I'm just saying. Hmm. Coming to your house and we're sitting at the table and I got shorts on because it's summertime and your dog is just walking in between my fucking legs. <laughs> and you just look at me dead in my eye like you don't and I'm just like, oh shit, damn. I'm just like, oh just let him be. Like, let him be. Hold on, so is it the pet or the pet owner? It's both. It's both. It's both people, but I don't like pets <clears throat> at all. First of all, I like my I have a fear and my fear is of reptiles. I fear reptiles. Hmm. Don't don't enjoy them anything. I don't like snakes. All, all reptiles? All like like snakes, frogs, lizards, like all of those type of spe- like any of the geckos, all of it, just disgusting. Iguanas, um, and then like when it comes to like domesticated pets, birds, cats, ferrets, whatever, I think that is the stupidest thing us humans do is put a fucking animal yeah. in our house. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna and front. The one, give them a saying name. It, you saying it like that <laughs> literally made it. The dumbest thing is that, <laughs> bruh. They serve no in one. our house <laughs> and give it a name. name. <laughs> oh, fucking call it something. <laughs> it's not Charles. <laughs> it's a it's it's a a mutated <laughs> wolf that you'd have turned into this little. Puffy dog, and just and called it Charles. Is that Charles? Yeah. And then like dogs and cats, I don't like how it's gonna be maybe a little too TMI. I don't like how you can see their asshole all the time. Like I feel like that's the (laughs) rudest shit pets can do. Like I feel like they're just like kiss my ass all the time, all the time. (laughs) And then they sit. Naked asshole on your carpet and just be ha, 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 with that stupid ass tail just <laughs> on your carpet. Let your kids drop an Oreo on your fucking carpet. You'll lose your shit. But that damn Charles sit his naked asshole on your carpet and you're like, come here, boy. <laughs> you know? hey, so stupid. And then kiss him in the mouth. Kiss him in the mouth. <laughs> Let the nigga get in your bed and shit. Like that is a dump. Feed him. You gotta feed this nigga like that. I love how feed him was like. <laughs> it was it was like kiss him. Let him get in your bed. Feed him. <laughs> He's like, hey babe, can you pick the dog up food on the way home? Like, he's a dog. Let him go eat whatever the fuck he can eat. find on the ground. Him ground. He's a dog. Oh wow! Well, uh, I, I tried to end this in a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole. That's a oh. show in itself. I hate animals, bro. Oh, I tried to end on a light note. Um, we we kind of touched on it a couple times. I do want to figure out. You know, this is our first episode. In case y'all didn't notice, <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to figure out what kind of. Uh, you know, what kind of games or, you know, things we're going to do on the show going forward, if anything. I guess we could talk about that in episode two. Um, you know, if there's any, you know. Yeah, I think we, I think there should be a definitely, like, uh, kind of a segment of what we did. 
but call it something like you know with Diddy be like like what the hell is wrong with him or what you know what I mean like well, what, what's going you know what I mean something like that yeah yeah where we yeah. could just kind of uh, segue into going into that but um um all in all man like it's called them you know uh, no U turns or no turn signals so you just never know. Never know. <laughs> which direction you don't know, which man. direction is gonna happen at. I loved it. I loved it. We, we we did that. That was I feel like that was a strong episode one. I feel like if 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 let's say by next year this time, you know, we're filming episode one thirty two and we go back and have a flashback, a one year flashback to this day. And rewatch some of this. I think we'll be happy. Yeah, you Jimmy will be in jail. I, I still won't have any fucking pets because that nigga Jackson is not coming to Texas. Like I, I was like, look, if you talk about bringing that dog, y'all might as well not even come. Like I, I live, and then my apartment is right by the goddamn dog park. So oh. all in Saturday, all they day. just out there throwing balls with these, and I'm like. Where are your kids at? You don't even take your kids out and throw the pigskin around anymore. They just in there playing Fortnite. But you got goddamn Lucky out there running back and forth. You getting his ass all tired. Quality and, time. And then when dogs get hot, they get musty. You know that smell like they've yeah. been outside? You're like. Yeah. And then yeah. you bring the nigga in your house. Yeah. If you guys didn't pick it up, Reg from the Sev definitely does not like. <laughs> <laughs> does not like animals. Um, all right, man. Um. I think that's it. I don't know how we close the show, so let's just close the show. You know what I'm saying? All right, my G. All right. Peace. Bye.